It's always marvellous when your mother's in the audience. Um, did anybody notice that both the speakers for the proposition got their defence in early, suggested that you wouldn't be open-minded on this, that you probably had already made up your mind? I wonder what it is, ladies and gentlemen, that makes them not be confident in the case they want to make this evening. And I think it's something rather simple. It's that I'm not sure we've actually had the Brexit that they promised us. I think we might have had Brexit in name only. So let's look at the actual evidence of this. And, and I talk about Brexit since it actually happened, not 2016, but actually when we did leave the single market and join this wonderful free trade agreement. Because all the evidence suggests that we have all the economic and social hit of leaving the European Union, but none of the freedoms and benefits that were promised. No one, least of all Daniel I know, can be happy with that. Daniel, I think of rather affectionately as the Kaiser Soze of Brexit. You didn't see him coming, but we've all seen the consequences. To be fair to Daniel, he wasn't one of those people promising us that net migration would be under 100,000 a year. That was Michael Gove. It is now 239,000 a year. He didn't drive a bus with 350 million for the NHS written on the back of it. To be fair, the NHS has had more money. That's down to the pandemic, not Brexit. And he didn't say we would take back control of our fish. Uh, but the new research showing this year that significant EU access to the waters around the UK remain, indeed, to those six to seven, 12 nautical miles that we were promised would be ours and ours alone. And in fact, the evidence shows us that since we left the European Union, the Brexit trade deal means that exporting fish and seafood costs more and takes longer. So the fish is less fresh and the customers have been lost. So perhaps have more chips and less fish with your national dish, thanks to Brexit. Daniel did say we could do better than being part of this regional association, he calls it, largest trade and block in the world to everybody else. But no matter, geography wasn't important to him. The UK is yet to implement, though, since we left the European Union, a single brand new trade deal that it couldn't have had under the existing terms of the European Union, even in our relationship with Japan. Indeed, the only point of contention about the new trade deal with Japan is whether we are worse off than we would have been if we'd stayed in the European Union. Daniel didn't argue that we would need to leave the single market, but has now argued that we should never have left, but it would be mad to go back. It's a bit like being locked out of your house and then saying it's madness to go and see a locksmith and get some keys cut so that you can actually get back in. So this, this Brexit that nobody will take responsibility for, what has it given us? Well, as Ian Martin, that well-known Ramona, has told us, exports to the EU, I'm sorry to report, Robin, Rod, Robert, rather, are down almost 12%. That's not an insubstantial figure. Indeed, the UK in a changing Europe's research, an independent ACCA body, shows that Brexit has precipitated a 25% fall in imports. Why does that matter? Because the fall in imports isn't just about whether you can eat French brie or have um, a German sausage. It's actually about the money and the, the impact that you have on our production lines. Two thirds of international trade is products that we use as inputs in our chains of production and supply chain. What does that mean in practice for all of us? It means it's much harder for our businesses to make do. Little wonder that EU-UK trade relationships are down 33%, and it is mainly small businesses. We might be a nation of shopkeepers, but many are shutting up shop as a result of Brexit. Indeed, it has affected the cost of living, the biggest crisis that we now face post-pandemic. The increase in those trade barriers has led to a 6% increase in food prices. Again, not my words, the UK and a changing Europe independent research. Inflation in food products that Britain tends to import from the European Union, like fresh pork, tomatoes and jams, was much more pronounced than that tuna or exotic fruit. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, you're left with a Hawaiian pizza and not much else. Because you cannot eat red tape, but you've got an awful lot more of it as a result of Brexit. And that is a hit not just for trade, but also for our tax take. Because the OBR, again, an independent body, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Robert, shows that economic growth is down 4% as a result of these trends. And every 1% of loss of growth is a £9 billion loss of revenue for the NHS, for social care, for our policing. But what about those regulatory freedoms we were promised? Surely, surely those are those sunny, uplit lands. 
Well, the reality shows us that since we've left the European Union, very little has changed, and it's not hard to see why. The divergence tracker shows us that for all those freedoms that were hard fought by people like Daniel and Robert, there are only 27 cases of actual divergence from those thousands of restrictive rules that the EU brought us in. Let's have a look at what some of those might be, those benefits that you are voting for if you vote yes tonight. Well, they do include trophy hunting, but not foie gras and fur, because of course nothing is too good for the workers. Um, it is about compensation on flights. Uh, the government is using divergence to make sure that you don't get as much compensation if your flight is delayed. If you are sat at Gatwick in the coming weeks, do think about that one as a benefit of Brexit. Um, also, non-recognition of blue badges for disabled people. Again, a point of divergence that the government has yet to do anything about for those 2.3 million of people for whom a blue badge is a critical way of moving around the country. As, again, UK and Changing Europe point out, the benefits of Brexit document that the government produced, all 105 pages, was not short of ideas, but many of those ideas were things that you could have done in the European Union anyway, and most are recycled. And possibly asking readers of The Sun, as Jacob Rees-Mogg has now done, to come up with ideas isn't the best use of those few civil servants that have actually come into the office's time. Because the truth is, any radical divergence is unlikely to be possible, because it, what it does to business is ask them to choose. It asks them to choose whether they would only trade in the UK, or whether they would only trade with Europe, or whether they want to run two separate regulatory regimes. And with an audience nearby of 600 million customers, it's not hard to see why business is calling for the government not to be radical. And indeed, there are some regulations you probably do want to keep for good reason. For example, right now, the government is having to reconfigure our airline safety regulations. The ones that we've had from Europe that meant that planes were flying to AP could be equally safe everywhere, we're having to redo. We haven't, in the two minutes I've got left, even got time to talk about services or employment rights, but when people talk about European red type, that's often what they mean. The fact that you can have an employment contract at all that comes from Europe, that equal pay is underpinned by European law. And we know from the Beecroft report where this government is intending to go on those things. And indeed, libertarians such as Daniel and Robert are often fond of telling us about the dangers of these overbearing states. But when the state itself is taking away your rights, who is it who's left to look after you? And one of the challenges here is that the EU was giving you many more protections than you might have realised including on decent consumer rights, whether you could indeed just buy one charger for your phone. I don't know about you, but I'd rather carry around one cable than many. Again, something that this government has decided not to pick up. We haven't even talked about the shame that is what is happening in Northern Ireland as a result of playing fast and loose with the Good Friday Agreement. But if we've got Brino, has the EU changed, might be your question. Well, surely we've achieved that. We've given them the short, sharp shock of walking out well, not really. Actually, the EU has worked together in Ukraine, and we have been outside the room looking in. The EU, again, has started to work together on refugees, yet we are outside the room looking in and deciding to deport people to Rwanda. What have we got out of Europe, then? Well, fewer politicians. We don't have MEPs like Daniel was. We've got those blue passports and the crown stamp on your pint glass. And some people have made an awful lot of money out of it. Uh, Crispin O'Day, a hedge fund manager who lately contributed £650,000 to the pro-leave campaign, made £220 million betting as the pound collapsed post-Europe. And, of course, it is given work for politicians like myself. When you've got 1,500 pieces of legislation to rewrite, we can do that rather than deal with the cost-living crisis or climate change or the social care crisis. So the answer is you must vote that we were wrong to do Brexit, but also we now need to fix it. And that's not about rejoining, that's not on the table, and it's not something I'm advocating, but it is about accepting responsibility. And your vote tonight for the point that Dominic and I make is to make people like Daniel and Robert take responsibility because, Daniel, you quoted the Henry the V speech, Henry the V speech, rather, uh, when the campaign run, the band of brothers who fought for our freedom. Um, not least because that speech talks about those who were not there should hold their manhoods cheap when they weren't fighting with you. And I'll leave you, ladies and gentlemen, to think about what manhoods they're talking about. Because, frankly, the Brexiteers got this country by the short and curlies. But as Mar Queen Margaret in Henry VI taught us, wise men ne'er sit and wail their loss, but cheerily seek how to redress their harms. So by voting with myself and Dominic tonight, you are sending a message to Robert and to Daniel to be a little less of a hooray Henry and much more like Maggie. Thank you. Very good.